Per definition, an API stands for Application Programming Interfaces. And as the name already indicates, they provide to developers an interface which they can use to interact with different applications. And the Web API is an API, so an application programming interface over the web, which can be accessed using the HTTP protocol. And HTTP is the set of rules for transferring data in World Wide Web. Now, to better understand the Web APIs, let us take a real world example. As an example, think about the electricity supply in your house. If you want to use an appliance in your house, you plug it into a plug socket and it works. You know nothing about the electricity and how it works, you know nothing about the electricity infrastructure in your house and also about how the electricity itself is generated. But what's important is that you use the electricity and let's say you charge your phone. In this case, the plug socket is the interface that you use to access the electricity from a power supply. The same is true for the web APIs. Instead of having access to the code base, you are exposed to an API which you can use to access all the code functionality. This way, you use the code without knowing anything about the code base, about the programming languages, the different methods, the infrastructure, or anything. You just use the interface and you use the code without knowing anything about the code base. Now, this is when you consume other APIs. As a developer, you are not just a consumer, you can also create your own APIs and expose them so the others can use them. But before we build our first API, let us talk about the web API architecture. On the left, we have the client apps, which can be an Angular app, a React app, or even iOS and Android apps. In the middle, we have the web API, which serves as a communicator between the client on the left and the data storage on the right section. For the client apps to show some data, you need to send a request to the web API. And you do that by sending an HTTP request. API will receive this request, will check for the request requirements. It can be a request which is asking for data or wanting to add new data to the database. But whatever the case, the web API will then communicate with the data storage. To communicate with the data storage, they need to use a translator which understands both languages. A translator which can translate c -sharp code to SQL and vice versa. And that is the Entity Framework Core. You'll learn about the Entity Framework Core on the upcoming parts. The language that the Entity Framework Core uses is the Entity Data Model language, which uses c -sharp classes as models so basically, all the SQL tables are converted into c -sharp understandable code using c -sharp classes, which we also call models. In these models, you can define relationships between tables and much more. Once the Web API sends or retrieves data from the data storage using a model, it will send a response back to the client apps using an HTTP response. We will talk about the response types on the upcoming parts.